Hey, thank you so much for tuning into our Calvary YouTube channel. We're a local church here based in Miami, Florida, with the mission of bringing people to life through the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you want to know more information about who we are, or if you have any questions, feel free to visit our website at calvaryconnect.com. Now, enjoy today's message. John chapter 10. I'm excited about tackling this question today because I think it's going to help a lot of us hear from God. In John chapter 10, Jesus is speaking and he's giving us an example of the relationship he wants to have with us. I want you to read this in your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, share with the person next to you. We're also going to put it up on the screen. John chapter, the, chapter 10, beginning in verse 3. Are you there? Can you shout amen? Amen. All right, Jesus says this, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Jesus says they know his voice. They know his voice. There's a way of knowing the voice of God. Jesus said, you'll follow the shepherd because you will know his voice. Verse verse 5, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus is saying there's a way to recognize the voice of God. Right? There's a voice that, that you hear it and you're like, for example, have you ever been in a crowd and somebody you know calls you and you're like, I know that voice, right? Has it ever happened to you? When we were young growing up, my dad, my dad has this whistle that you just know. I would hear the whistle. I don't, I don't, I don't know where I'll be. I'll be in the, in the middle of a crowd, massive crowd. I'll hear the whistle over the crowd, over sirens, over whatever. I'll be like, that's the whistle. I better get home. That whistle means I'm in trouble, right? I knew, I recognized that whistle, right? But then it says there's a way of knowing also what's not from God. There's a way of knowing, wait, this is not direction that I should go. If some of us are seeking God's will and we're asking, God, should I take this job? God, should I marry this person? God, if this is the direction you want me to take, God, what should I do with my feet? There's a way to know, oh, wait, wait, this is not from God. This is a stranger's voice. Don't do this. Don't do that. And God says, I'll lead you in the way. This is the relationship that God wants to have with us. Amen. Come on, why don't we close our eyes, bow our head. I'm going to ask God to help us here this afternoon that we may hear his voice. Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for this time together in your house. God, we pray that you may have your way in our lives. God, that you may speak to us. God, open up our ears, open up our eyes to know you and to hear you. Thank you that you want to have a relationship with us, that you love us, that you're for us, you're not against us, you're on our side. I pray that if anybody walked in struggling, if anybody walked in discouraged or down, God, that you may lift up their heads so that they may see you and know you. It is in Jesus' name, all of God's people say, come on, 1 p.m., all of God's people say, can you give Jesus one more praise? Come on, as loud as you can. I think one of the most frustrating things is not being able to hear a voice. Has to be extremely frustrated to not be able to hear a voice, especially one that you're waiting to get a reply from. I think recently I was on the phone in my car and I'm trying to use the Bluetooth system of speaking through the speaker so that there's not a handheld phone on my hands, right? All that, right? I'm trying to drive. I'm on the Palmetto, which is the worst expressway in Miami. And so I'm trying to do it through the Bluetooth. Have you ever been on the phone and you can't hear the voice on the other side? Right, I'm there trying to talk, and I don't want to pick up the phone, but I can't hear nothing, and I'm frustrated. I really think that there's a lot of believers that are living frustrated because they can't hear the voice of God. Right, we got a lot of us that are believers, a lot of us that are Christians, that we're trying to live this thing out, but we're frustrated saying, does God speak because I can't hear him? Right, like, I, I just don't get it. Does God speak? Before hearing the voice of God, we first need to tackle the first question is, does God even speak? Because maybe some of us in here are like, man, I've heard that God speaks. I've heard that maybe he talks to somebody, but I'm not sure if God speaks. And maybe that's the first question in your heart. Does God speak? Because I'm I'm pretty frustrated. I've been asking God, and I can't hear his voice. Well, if you want to know about something, how many know you need to study that something? I'll never forget, a few years ago, me and Diana, we bought a camera. We were frustrated photographers, and we bought this professional camera, thinking that we were to take awesome pictures. And uh, eight years later, we still don't know how to use that camera, right? Because we never went back to the manual, and we never studied the camera, right? Thank God that he gave us a book to study him, to know him, to get to understand who he is. Anybody thankful for the Word of God? Come on, we got the Word of God where he shows himself to us. And so if we were to open up the Bible right at the very beginning in the book of Genesis, let's start right at the very beginning. We see that God, he is a speaking God. Right at the beginning of the Bible, the Bible says he speaks the world into creation. 
He says, let there be light. And light was made. Imagine being able to do that, right? All of a sudden, he's like, he created, let there be fish. And all of a sudden, Free Willy just jumped out of the ocean, right? <laughs> let there be animals, and animals are created all over the place. Like, imagine, let there be a lion, and a lion came out roaring. Like, by the voice, by his power, he spoke it into creation. He's a speaking God. Then he gets together with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus and eternity past, and he says, let us make man in our image. Whoa. He says he grabbed the dust and he breathed life into him, and man, we came alive. And he made man and we're... God is a speaking God. Adam and Eve are walking by the garden. They're having an amazing time. And the Bible says they walk with God. They talk with God. Right? Imagine to have a relationship where you walk and talk with God. From the very beginning, we see that God wants to talk to his creation. God wants to walk with his creation. God wants us to know him, and he wants us to be in line with him. So at the very beginning, Genesis, we, let's go all the way to the end. Let's go to Revelation. In Revelation, we see that he says, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. Whoa. All throughout the Bible, he's saying, listen, he's talking to different men and women of God. God is always speaking. And at the very end, he says, let the church hear what the Spirit is saying. Whoa, God is speaking. Maybe, maybe you're here and you're like, okay, if God does speak, then, then what does he sound like, Alex? Because I've never heard him, right? How's his voice? How do you know it's God? I'm going to give you some personal examples, okay? In my own life, I, I can't say that I've heard God audibly the way you're hearing me now, right? I've never had that, but I've had moments in my life where it's been so strong that I could, I could almost say it's been like it's audible, right? I believe in my own life, I've heard from God. I hear from God. And I believe in your own life, you can hear from God as well, right? There's been moments in my life where I feel almost like this impression in my spirit. More than a feeling, it's a conviction, right? I've been asking about something and I hear something. And sometimes it's been so strong that it feels like it's a loud voice over my life. And it's like, whoa, thank God, thank you for God. God, should I do this? No, don't. Alex, don't, don't. Alex, no, do this. Whoa, it's a strong impression. God, should I marry this Colombian girl named Diana? Do it. God, do it. Right there, I'm like, yes, God, Right? <laughs> Right? But there's been moments in my life where I just knew it. I sensed the voice of God so strong, it sounded like it was, it sounds like, like a loud thunder. I don't even know how to explain it. Like, you're just like, whoa, this, and it's only happened two or three times where it's so loud that I feel this is the direction I should go. Right? I remember one time I was at a camp. I was at a youth retreat. By the way, the youth are about to go on youth retreat. Yeah. <laughs> this is why they're important. I believe God does something in moments like that. And I remember I was in a youth retreat, and I literally felt like God said I was going to serve him all the days of my life. Right, like it was a strong impression, like you're to serve me, like, like be careful even what you do with your life because I got a purpose in your life. And it was like a feeling like, oh my God, I, I feel it. God, I, I'm yours. I'm, I surrender. I'm all in. God, I hear your voice, right? Sometimes I get visions. Sometimes I'll see something. I'll get like a picture. I'll get a picture of a face of somebody. Sometimes I'll see a certain situation. One time, no lie, I saw a broken ankle. I saw a broken foot. I promise, this, this happens to me rarely, rarely. I'm not going to tell you all the time because then people come up to me and be like, I saw you. you. I saw that God told me you were going to marry. Don't, don't believe that guy. He's just thirsty, okay? That's not how God works. <laughs> Go back to his word and confirm it, right? Uh, but I saw like a broken ankle. And I remember speaking to somebody and, uh, and that person confirmed that their wife had a broken ankle and I was supposed to go pray over that person, right? So different things. Sometimes I'll get a name and I'll be, that, I just can't shake that name. And I'll call that person. I'll tell them what's on my heart. And it's confirmed that they were going through whatever I'm telling them, right? That's the way God speaks so he can speak to you but primarily he speaks through his word that's the word of God he's going to speak in fact if God speaks other than through his word whether through a prophet or a picture or or a vision or you have a feeling you always got to go back and check it through the word if it goes against the word of God then that's not from God Alex I got this impression I should go rob a bank that's not from God okay that goes against the word of God Right? But he does speak. Always go back and check it with the word. That's why I love it. This. this is one of my favorite verses of all time. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. It says, call to me and I'll answer you and I'll tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. I want us all to read this together. Come on. Call to me and I'll answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. If you're ever in trouble, you can call 333. That's God's number. Call to me and I will answer you. We have a God that does not leave us on the phone hanging, does not leave us holding, does not leave us waiting. He's a God that answers. He's a God that speaks. Come on, this is the God that we serve. 
He wants to have a personal relationship. Call on him and he's going to answer you. Today, maybe there's somebody in here you're like, Alex, I'm confused. I don't know where to go in life. I don't know what's the direction I take. Call on God. He's going to show you things. He's going to show you unsearchable things, right? He wants to have a personal. We always talk about a personal relationship with God. Not with a church, not with a pastor, a personal relationship with God. Author and speaker Dallas Willard, I love how he put it. He put it this way. If God doesn't speak today, then the greatest disservice we could ever do is to tell people that they could have a personal relationship with Jesus. Right? If God does not speak, there's some sections in Christianity that they will say, no, God does not speak today. Well, if he doesn't, then we shouldn't tell people that they can have a personal relationship with Jesus. But he does speak. That's why we can't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Because he wants to speak to each and every single one of us. John 10, what we just read. John 10, this is Jesus speaking. He's talking about having a personal relationship with each and every single one of us. And he gives us this picture of a shepherd leading sheep. Right? And Jesus says, he'll go before them and he'll say, follow me and they will recognize my voice. You'll recognize the voice of God and you'll know where to go. Jesus will say, come this way. I'm going to lead you to green pastures. Come here. I'm going to lead you to still waters. It's the voice of Jesus leading us. It's a personal shepherd for you and for me. We have a personal shepherd who shows us the way, who shows us the path, who tells us where to go. We can hear God speak. Right? This is the personal God that we have. Isaiah, there's a verse in Isaiah that puts it this way. It says that he'll come behind us and in front of us and he'll say, go this way. This is the way. He speaks to his people. God is a speaking God. And so maybe you're here like, okay, fine. You tell me God speaks. Well, how come I haven't heard him, right? That's a lot of us. A lot of us is what we ask a lot. I've asked this a couple of times. We're like, well, how come I haven't heard God? And so many people have asked, how come I haven't heard God? You hear God. Other people hear God. How come I haven't heard God? I really believe that we haven't heard from God is because we have a lot of distractions in our life. There's a whole lot of distractions in our life. Pastor Chris Hodges puts it this way. We have weapons of mass distractions. We have weapons of mass distractions in our life. How come I can't hear from God? Because you're distracted. The question isn't, does God speak? The question is, are we listening? Right? Are we listening? I'm going to share with you three different weapons of mass distractions that are in our life. I, I call them the too many twos. Too many twos. Number one, we're too busy. We're too busy. We live busy lives. Right? We, we don't stop from, from sun up to sundown. We are nonstop, right? Because you got to pay bills, bills, bills. Can you pay my bills? Can you pay my automobiles, right? Like there's so many bills. We live our lives trying to pay bills. So from the morning, the first thing that is ringing is our phone with emails, with texts. We got to check this. We got to check that. Oh, this bill came in. This email came in. This text came in. This person was that. My boss is already calling me. My employee is already calling me. Facebook is already calling me. Hello. Instagram's already calling me. Twitter's already calling me. If you're thirsty, Tinder's already calling me right all these things are already calling my name then you got to get the kids ready got to wake up get them ready got to make sure that they, they take a shower so they don't go to school smiling yeah they got to take a shower then drop them off at school then you got to go work 40 hours a week sometimes 50 60 70 hours a week then you got to go pick them off and take them off to dance practice football practice all kinds of practices practice 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 then you get home at eight o'clock at night nobody's cooked so you got to go pick up a meal then come home everybody eats by the time you see it's 11 30 at night and there's no time for god we live busy lives, right? There's nothing wrong with busy lives, but we need to make time for God. Otherwise, Monday through Saturday will fly by. And all of a sudden, Sunday comes around again, and we've been so busy for God, we don't make time for him. In Luke, I believe it's Luke chapter 14, Jesus is going to uh, his friend's house, Lazarus. Martha and Mary, those were some of his closest friends in life. He goes over their house, and the Bible says that when he gets to their house, it says that Mary sits at the feet of Jesus to hear from him. She's like, oh, my God, Jesus is here. I want to hear from Jesus, right? And she just sits down. She's like, Jesus, this is your humble servant. And she's just like listening to Jesus, right? And all of a sudden it says that her sister, Martha, was in the kitchen. One translation says that she was distracted in the kitchen. Right? How many of us are distracted by the kitchen of life? With bills to pay and kids to raise and brats, or I mean kids to raise and, and, and just things to do and spouses and bills and a work and all these things, right? Like life can get busy, right? And we're distracted about Jesus is there trying to talk to us. How come Mary's hearing? How come I don't hear? Well, Martha, you're distracted in the kitchen. Well, Mary's listening. Yeah, but Mary made time for God, right? You got to make time for God. Make time. If you don't make time, you're never going to have time. 
Right? Like a lot of us, we say, well, I don't have time. Well, you need to make time. Right? Like, like, for example, I don't have time to go to the gym. Yeah, of course, you need to make time to go to the gym, right? Otherwise, you're never going to have it. If we keep saying, well, I'm just busy, busy, well, you do whatever you can. Right? If you got to wake up 30 minutes earlier, maybe wake up even 10 minutes earlier, maybe go to sleep 10 minutes later, but make time for God. I'll put it this way. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. We live busy lives, noisy lives. We're running all around, right? All around. Look at the way the Bible puts it in Psalm chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. This is for somebody this afternoon. Be still and know that I am God. If you're never still, you will never know. If you're never still, you will never know. Sometimes you just need to stop. Sometimes you just need to stop to say, you know what, I'm going to get away from all the distract, from the busy. I need to stop, and I need to make time for God. I don't know what you got to stop this week. I don't know what you're going to do, but, but that's the number one major distraction is that we are too busy. Number two is that we have too many voices, too many voices, right? I'll put it this way. We have competing voices in our life. Right? Everything is calling our attention. You turn on the TV, they're telling you what car to buy, what cologne to buy, how you should look. You go to the Publix and you see every single magazine that says you should look like this, you should buy this. If you buy this, you'll drop 40 pounds in 20 hours. If you do this, you'll look amazing. Right? Everything's calling our attention. Buy this cologne, buy this perfume, buy this car, buy this thing. And everything is competing for our attention. Everything's trying to get your attention. Focus on me. Look at me. Hello. Everything is calling your name. We have competing voices all around. Which voice are we going to listen to? And we're all surrounded by competing voices. It's all around us. It's just life. Life is going to surround us with voices. Which voice will we listen to, right? There's voices all around, right? I'll share with you two different kinds of voices. There's interior voices. Interior voices are the voices that all of a sudden will tell you, hey, nope, you can't have a relationship with God. God doesn't love you. No, you're not good enough. No, you messed up too much. No, you're too deep in sin. No, there's something wrong in your life. No, you've messed up. God does not want to talk to you. God wants to speak to somebody else, but God doesn't want to speak to you. No, you can't do that. No, you can't have a personal relationship with life. All of a sudden, there's anxiety. All of a sudden, there's stress. All of a sudden, there's a lot of worry. All of a sudden, we're preoccupied just by the internal voices. All of a sudden, you just need to say, be quiet. I have a God that loves me. I am who he says I am. Right? We need to shut those voices down. I think I just woke up like three people. <laughs> Be quiet. Uh, everyone's been talking. <laughs> Let's quiet those inside voices. They will drive us crazy. Right? And all of us know what we're talking about. The stress, the anxiety, right? Competing voice. Then there's outside voices. There's TV. There's radio. There's family. There's marriage. Stuff that we need to attend to. But it's calling our name. And it's calling us for attention. You know, it's just one of the big ones, social media. There's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, Snapchat. Spend time with me. Come look at what this person's eating for lunch. Come look at this person's selfie. Come look at what this person's doing on their lunch break. Come look at that, right? And we spend all day checking other people's stories, other people's posts. Let's see what the news says on Twitter. Let's say what Donald Trump said today. Let's go see what this person said today. What is CNN? What is Fox News? There's a fight between them always. I want to keep up to date with every single little last second. I want to go on Facebook and see what video was that. It's the end of the world. There's a preacher on Facebook saying it's the end of the world. Oh, my God, right? And we're caught up, caught up, caught up. And we're listening to everybody else except God. Right? All of a sudden, you'll see a family. They're sitting together for dinner, and nobody's talking to one another. They're all on their phone. Right? We need to shut some stuff down. So you know what? I'm going to put this down for a moment because I got too many voices, and I want to hear the voice of God. I want to hear the voice of my Father. I want to get close to Him. I want to see what He wants to do in my life. One pastor, he put it this way. He says he has a rule in his life that he doesn't turn on anything electronic until he first says good morning to God. What a great practice, I thought when I heard that. I'm like, what a great practice to put into our life, right? We wake up, we open up our eyes, and the first thing is emails, right? <laughs> Bam, and we're always checking what everybody else is doing, right? But, but say, man, for a moment, maybe, maybe this week, you know, I've done this for seasons of my life. I've done this at times in my life. I, I delete the apps out of my phone. I literally just delete the apps. Uh, you know, I, I, won't, I won't be on Instagram for a week. I won't be on Instagram. For, I've done it for a month. 
I know other pastors here that have done the same. It's just, I'm not going to be on social media. I'm not going to be on Twitter. I'm not going to be on any of that. I, I want to hear the voice of God. I want to be separated. I want to spend time with God. I want to hear the direction for my life, direction for my marriage, direction for my family. And again, that's some of us. But maybe you got your own way of doing things. That's cool. Whatever it is. But I'm just saying, that make sure you don't got so many voices in your life. I'll put it this way. To hear God's voice, turn down the world's volume. To hear God's voice, turn down the world's volume. We got, we got too much stuff to do, too, too much busyness. We got too many voices. And number three, we are too unprepared. Too unprepared. Alex, what do you mean by that? Well, how's the condition of your heart to hear from God? Are you prepared to hear from God? I think a lot of times we're so busy in so many voices that our hearts are not prepared to hear from God. He wants to speak to you, but your heart's not ready. You haven't taken time. I'll give you an example. A lot of us, we come to church on Sunday, right? And we'll wake up in the morning. Let's say we wake up late. We're rushing. We're like, oh, my God, hurry up. The service starts at 1 p.m. Don't move the lead this head. This car, the house looks like a war zone, right? Everybody's getting ready. Ah, you're in the car. You're arguing. You're fighting. We're late because of you. Oh, my God. Ah. We walk in in the second or third song. We're rushing the kids' team. And then we come in here and we sit down. By the time we sit down, we're on the fourth song. We're like, oh, thank you, God. I'm funny. Did I leave the iron on? Oh, my God, I left the kitchen on. All right. right? And, and, and our heart, the last thing that it's prepared for is to receive from God. Right? How, how can we do this? Well, how about if we wake up a little bit earlier, even on a Sunday? How about if we wake up a little bit earlier and say, God, before I head off and before we go on this marathon run to church, God, God, today I'm going to prepare. God, can you speak to me today? I'm preparing my heart that when I get to service, you'll have a word for me. I'm preparing my heart that your spirit will do something. God, show me. God, can you show me if there's an area in my life that I still need to get, get, get to work on? God, is there an area of my life that, that, that I still need to cleanse out and your spirit needs to do work in my life? God, I want to go to church not just to receive, but I want to go to church to worship you too. Right? But we need to prepare our heart. We don't walk in in the second or third song. We walk in right before rolling and we say we're ready for the first song. In fact, I'm not even here for the teaching. I'm here to worship my God, to thank him for what he's done this whole week. Right? But we make time. Right? And we prepare our heart. Maybe today, maybe there's a little bit of pride in our heart, sin in our heart bitterness in our heart maybe our heart has grown dual like the same way that as we grow older our ears can grow dull and it's like hello i'm talking to you so I, have, I can't hear nothing right we, as we get older we lose our hearing not older let's say advanced in age right <laughs> some of us i think we're so advanced in life that we've shut out the voice of god because of life, because of situations, and all of a sudden it starts to affect our faith jesus said if you want to if you want to go into the kingdom of god you got to be like a little child right prepare your heart and say god i'm ready to hear from you I'm preparing my heart. God, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wake up Tuesday a little bit early, 15 minutes early. I'm going to prepare my heart for what you want to do. Not just on a Sunday. Right? All these boys. It says that kids under 10 nowadays spend seven to eight hours a day on social media. That's 50-something hours a week. Right? And some of us, we do the same thing. Right? And we give social media 50-something hours. We give other people 40-something hours. And yet we give God 60 minutes on a Sunday and expect to hear from him. Right, but it's like, God, I'm going to prepare my heart. I want to hear your voice. So we got major distractions, weapons of mass distraction in our life. There's a story of a young man in the Bible that he didn't have a whole lot of distractions, right? He, he had a childlike heart. He was a young boy, and, and he heard from God directly. And we see that he wasn't too busy. We see that he didn't have too many voices, and we see that he had a prepared heart. Well, what did he have to create an environment to hear the voice of God? Go to 1 Samuel with me. Go to 1 Samuel really quick. If you could open up your Bibles or share with your neighbors the last story we're going to read. Go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 3. You can do it really quick if you have an iPad, iPhone. If you have neither, you can use your eyelids on the screen. <laughs> Adam did that on Friday night, and I loved it. I just told him I was going to take it. Look, look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 3 through 11 is a story of Samuel who's in the house of God, right? And, and the Bible says that he hears from the Lord. He, he grew up serving and ministering and being around the house of God. I just want us to read this, and we're going to take a few things from here that I think can help us create an environment where God can speak to us. On um, verse 3, it says, The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel, he's a young man, he was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The ark of God represented the presence of God. And it says, and the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli. Eli was like the pastor of the temple of the church, an older man. He ran to him, and he says, uh, here, here I am. You called me, and Eli said, well, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went, and he laid down. Next verse. And he says, again, the Lord called Samuel the second time. Samuel! 
Samuel got up and he went to Eli. He said, here I am. Did you call me again? Eli must have gotten a little bit frustrated. My son, uh, no, I didn't call you. Go back. Lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And a third time the Lord called Samuel. Third time now God is calling him. God wants to speak to him. Samuel. And Samuel got up and he went to Eli and he said, here I am. You called me. But then Eli realized, this is important. Eli realized, the pastor realized, wait a minute. It is God who's calling Samuel. Right? And he, so he, Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you have a Bible, if you have a Bible right now in your hand, I want, you to, I want you to underline that. I want you to highlight that. That is extremely important. Can you say that with me? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you remember anything out of what we talked about today, remember that. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. God wants to speak. Are we ready to listen? Right? So Samuel went and he laid down in his place. and says the Lord came and he stood there and calling him as the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. He spoke to Samuel's life. Samuel had created an environment. He was in an environment where he could hear from God. Three things that we could do to create an environment to hear from God, right? Number one, number one is that we need to read his word. We need to read his word. Samuel was in the house of God. He was living literally in the temple, right? He was always around the word of God. The word of God was always being proclaimed. The word of God was always being studied. The word of God was always being taught. The priests would go up often and they would begin to declare the word of God. He would always hear the word of God. You need to be around the word of God. In fact, uh, at the beginning, it says that the lamp was there. You know what the lamp is representative of? It's, it's representative of his word. The Bible says that the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light on our path. Psalm chapter 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. Samuel had the word of God close to him at all times. I wonder if we're in the word of God at all times. Or do we just open up our Bibles when we get here on a Sunday afternoon? All right, we just got to wipe the dust off. It's amazing. Where are we going today, right? Can we put it into practice to read the Word of God every single day? Because if God is going to speak to you in any way, the number one way that God's going to speak to you is through the Word of God. This is the number one way that God is going to talk to us, speak to us, direct us, lead us, guide us, teach us, free us, deliver us, save us, is by his written word. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it is alive, it is active, and it is sharper than a double-edged sword. It is the word of God. But we need to get in the word of God. We need to make time to read it. Say, I'm going to do this, right? Maybe this week what you can do is say, I'm going to start with one verse a day. Wake up 10, 15 minutes earlier and say, God, I'm going to get one verse a day. Maybe like, ah, I'm not a good reader or whatever. I don't have a lot of time. Okay, I'm going to make time for one verse a day. Grab one verse and say, God, speak to me through this verse. Right? And pray before you start reading. Say, God, God, can you show me something in your word today? I bet you that some of you, you're going to start reading this week. And God is going to speak to you through a verse that you've heard a million other times before. But he's going to speak to you in a new way through it. Because it's alive. It's active. This book, it changes us as we read it. It is alive. It is powerful. That's why some call it the living word. It's alive. Make time for it. Maybe this week all you can do is one verse a day. That's cool. Maybe you can do one chapter a day. Do one chapter a day. The book of Proverbs has 31 chapters. Say for the next 31 days, I'm going to take a month and I'm going to read a chapter a day. Right? And just read a chapter a day. Maybe you can do what some of us do. Maybe you can read through the whole Bible in one year. There's a one-year Bible that you could do. Right? And just say every day I'm going to read a couple chapters and, and there's a little devo that you can do and some of us do that. You can do that. But don't get caught up on, oh, if I didn't read it today, then I got to catch up tomorrow. And I got to read 50 chapters tomorrow. Don't do that, right? Take, take it one at a time. Say, God, I'm going to spend some time in your word. Some of us are so much on Facebook, well, we need to get in his book, right? We need, we need to say, God, I need to get on this. This is what is life-giving. This is what's going to feed my soul. This is how you're going to speak to me. This is how you're going to lead me. This is how you're going to guide me. If I've been off, if I've been doing something I shouldn't be doing, the Word of God is going to put me right back in line. If I've been sinning, it's going to get me right back. It's gonna, it, says the, it says that the goodness of God leads us to repentance. When we read about His goodness, when we read about His kindness, it's going to lead us right back to Him. Get in the Word of God. Number one, read His Word. Number two, get in church. 
get in church. What do I mean by that, right? What do I mean get in church? It says that Samuel, he was in the church. He was in the tabernacle every single day of his life. I'm not telling you you have to live here. That's not what I'm saying, right? I'm not telling you you have to move in here and bring in a sleeping bag and you have to be here day to night. That's not what I'm saying. When I talk about get in church, what I'm talking about is get around the community. Get around people of God. There is something special, and God speaks when we're around godly believers who listen to God and can instruct us, guide us, pray for us, teach us. You need to get around a community. So many of us, we come to church on a Sunday morning, on a Sunday afternoon, give God 60 minutes and then go home, and we have no community around us. And some of our friends aren't helping us. Some of the people around our lives aren't helping us. Samuel was in the house of the Lord, and when God called him, he ran to a pastor, to a leader who instructed him in the ways of God. Some of you, this is the word I felt it in my spirit this whole week was all in. You need to be all in. You need to surrender completely. Like, I'll give God a Sunday morning, but I don't know about it. All in. Right? He's saying all in. Surrender. Get around the community. God's going to speak to you through community. God uses his word, and then he uses people. He uses people in your life. I'm thankful. I'm going to give you some examples. I'm thankful of people in my own life, right? There was a moment in my life where I was questioning if I was hearing from God. I was a young man, and now I'm old. <laughs> no, I was a young man, and, and I was questioning God. Is this from you? I feel like I should share this with somebody. I don't know. Like, what about if I go share this with them and they think I'm crazy? And uh, I says, well, and somebody came up to me a few weeks later and said, hey, can I, can I just share something with you that's on my heart? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. They said, man, I just really feel in my heart that, that you're questioning stuff with God, that he's putting words in your heart for people and you're not speaking to them because you, you're just nervous about them. You're confused about them. And God says, it's his word. Speak it. He's going to use you. Right. And, and God used somebody in my life to speak to me and to confirm what I was, I was already feeling in my own spirit, right? I'll never forget, I, I was at that youth camp and I received like that feeling, that, that inclination that I should serve God all the days of my life. And, and a few days later, somebody comes up to me and says, Alex, I, I don't even know what this means, but I see you one day serving God for your whole life. I see you standing up in front of different audiences and preaching the word of God. And God says, go after it. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. I'm just like, whoa, that's great. I just, a few days later, I, a few days earlier, I had felt that I should serve God all the days of my life, right? Last week, last week, me and Diana, we decided to take a few days off, and we decided to go away and get away from distractions and noises and voices, right? And we needed to just go and just, just spend some time together and in prayer and all that, and just, ah, let's just chill for a little bit. And while we're there, we get a text from a woman of God, and she's a part of this house. She lives somewhere else now, but she's a part of this house. We love her very much. She called us, and she said, hey, uh, I'm going to send you over something that I just feel from God for you guys. It's last week. We're like, all right, cool. Yeah, we're there, like, working on our laptops. On vacation, we were working on some stuff for the upcoming year, 2019. And we, get, we got a message from her, and she starts saying, hey, this is what I feel from God. And she starts just telling us all these things. And me and Diana are in tears, like, like in tears. What we were working on for the rest of this year and next year, she was just confirming. God says, do this, do that. God says, go for it. That what you're feeling in your heart is what God has. God uses people. God uses people. And we're there crying, crying like boogers everywhere. Like, oh, my God, like God is real, right? Like God is so real. He'll speak to you. But you need to get around the community. Some of you in here, you know what you need to do? You need to get in growth track. Right? We talk about it every week, and it's like, grow track, ah, I've been in church 20 years, I'm not, I don't need to go, go through grow track. It was designed so that God would speak to you through grow track. Yeah. Like today, today's step number three. Today's all about discovering your gifts and your purposes. Right? God can speak to you through grow track no matter how long you've been walking with him. You need to get in church, you need to get around a community. You know how God can speak to you? Through connect groups. No, yo creo que Jesús hace rato, yo no necesito nadie, right? No, you need, you need community in your life, right? You need some godly people around your life. You need some pastors, some leaders, some connect group people to say, hey, you're not going. No, I need to see you in church. I haven't seen you in church in two weeks. Where are you at? Come on. I'm going to pray for you. You're a man of God. You're a woman of God. I'm going to help you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to pray for you. You need some people. In your, get in connect groups in 30 days or less. We're, we're launching connect groups. A little bit more than 30 days. In about a month and a half, we're launching connect groups. Over 80 connect groups all over Miami. Get in one. It's going to be good for your soul. If you have questions, there's godly leaders there to help you. But you didn't get a connect. You know how? Get in the dream team. Serve on team. Get with people on team. Something happens when you get around. You start rubbing shoulders with people of God. And God all of a sudden gives give you words and inspire you. God does speak. Third and finally, and the band come up or over time. You need to get in his word. You need to get in the church. The last thing that Samuel was, that you need to spend time in his presence. 
spend time in his presence. Samuel was in the, in the temple. He was in the church, right? But, but notice what was close to Samuel was the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was this box that used to exist in the Old Testament, right? It was a box that God had told the Israelites to build a certain way. It had two angels on top of it, wings facing each other. And there in that box, in that Ark, is where the presence of God dwelled. In fact, not a whole lot of people could get close to it. Because if you got close to it and your heart wasn't right, you'd be in some trouble. Like that was the presence of God. The presence of God was there. And Samuel, growing up in church, he would be close to the Ark of the Covenant. In other words, he was close to the presence of God. A lot of us, what we need to do is that we need to spend time in his presence. In the Old Testament, it was in a box. In the New Testament, that doesn't exist anymore. The box is you and I. He resides in our heart. He resides in our soul. He resides in our spirit. It is the presence of God. But you need to spend time with God. One pastor put it this way, you need to cultivate the presence of God. You need to create an atmosphere, an environment where you're talking to God. Mike just shared with me that in the Greek, the presence of God means the face of God. That's amazing. Spending time face to face with God. God, I'm, I'm going to spend time with you. Alex, how do I do that? You know what's one way you can do that? By worshiping God. You just begin to worship God. Don't wait for a Sunday morning. Don't wait for a Sunday afternoon to sing three, four songs. You can sing three, four songs during the week. I know you're listening to Mark Anthony and Drake and all that, and we're having a good time. But, but when's the time we put some worship and just say, God, I'm going to worship you. God, I'm going to lift you up. God, you know what? On a Tuesday morning, I'm going to wake up before the sunrise. The psalmist says, early in the morning, I will seek your face. I'm going to wake up on a, on a Tuesday morning. I don't care. I don't even care if I'm off key. I don't even care if I don't have tone. I don't even care if I don't have range. Like, surely love and mercy, your peace and kind. You just start singing. And all of a sudden, the, this one pastor said, if you want to find God, begin to worship God and he'll find you. God is attracted to people who worship him. One verse in the Bible says that he's looking to and fro throughout the earth to see people whose hearts are leaning toward him. Right? Throughout the week, just say, God, I, I want to draw close. God, I want to work. I want to spend time in your presence. I'm going to make time and I'm going to be in your presence. I'm going to make sure that the Holy Spirit, he's work. Holy Spirit, fill me today before I go to my job, before I jump off the kids, before I'll do all that. God, I'm going to spend time in your prayer. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to sing your praise. I'm going to make sure that I talk about you day and night, that I talk about your goodness, that I talk about your peace, that I talk about your kindness. You're a good God. You save me from so much. You're an awesome God. You're a God whose mercy and grace they'll follow me all the days of my life. I'm going to speak it. I'm going to declare it. I'm going to say it. Right? But you need to create an atmosphere. See, I'm going to cultivate the presence of God. I'm going to get around his presence. I'm going to worship. Some of us will worship louder for other gods. Right? Called football teams and soccer teams and basketball teams. Right? I was one of them. I watch a Heat game and I'll lose my mind. When we had the baddest team on the planet, 2012 Miami Heat champions, we'll take out the Warriors right now, right? And one day I found myself that I was losing my mind over a team that has done nothing for me. The team hasn't saved me from nothing. The team hasn't done anything for me. And I said, wait a minute, there's nothing wrong with that. But if I'm going to lose my mind over a team, I'm going to worship my God like he saved me. Like he really gave me his grace. Like he really sanctified me. Oh, come on. Somebody needs to lift up their hands and say, surely mercy, surely goodness. It'll follow me. Your peace and kindness. Come on, let's get in the presence of God. Let's lift up every hand. Close every eye. Come on, let's worship him. Surely. Thank you, Jesus. Your peace and kindness. Come on, can we lift up every hand? Close every eye. Come on, can you just spend time right now? We're about to go, we're about to leave, but can we worship him for a moment?
on, with every eye closed, with every hand lifted. How do I hear the voice of God? Get in his word. Get in his church. Spend time in his presence. He speaks through his word. He speaks through people. And he speaks through his spirit. You'll hear him. He wants to speak to you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He's a personal God. And he wants to have a personal relationship. I really feel like right now, God is, gonna, is speaking to people right now. Some of us, God is telling us there's things that we need to get right in our hearts. Some of us, he, he's confirming things that we felt. He's, he's showing us. Come on, he's the God who speaks. Maybe a verse is coming to your mind. Maybe a passage is coming to your mind. And God is saying, remember, remember, remember. He speaks. He's a real God. He wants to speak to you today. God, I'm going to get away from some of the distractions and I'm going to make time for you. Thank you, Jesus. With every eye closed, with every head bowed, maybe you're in here today and you're saying, Alex, I don't know this God. I'm, I'm really far from God. I'm distant from God. I, I've never really had a relationship with God or whatever you call it. I, I've gone down the wrong path. I've done wrong things. I've said wrong things. I've thought wrong things. And maybe God wants to have a relationship with other people, but he doesn't want to have a relationship with me. I don't know. I just don't believe it. Or I've never really had one. And I don't think God could love somebody like me. Well, first and foremost, I want to tell you that all of us are sinners. There's not one perfect person in this place today. All of us have failed God. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We failed God. We've done wrong. We've thought wrong. We've said wrong. And the Bible says that God is separated from sin. He can't be with sin. But the Bible also says that God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus. And Jesus came and, and Jesus grabbed all of my sins, all of your sins, all of our flaws, all of our mistakes, everything that we've done wrong, all the sin of humanity. The Bible says that Jesus carried the sins of humanity on his shoulders. And the Bible says that Jesus, he went up on a cross. And there on that cross, he died for you and for me. He died for our sins. You and I can never pay for our own sins. There's no way that we can get right with God by ourselves. We, we need somebody to pay the penalty for what we've done wrong. And Jesus says, I'll, I'll do that for you. Jesus died for our sins on the cross. And he went down to a grave. And he was in a grave for three days. But the Bible says that after three days, Jesus, he resurrected. He's alive. He overcame sin and death for me and for you. The Bible says that Jesus, he's alive and he's offering new life. He's offering new hope, new grace, new mercy. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. And maybe that's hard for you to comprehend because nobody's ever loved you. Or maybe that's hard for you to comprehend because you think that you're not lovable enough for God. But I'm here to tell you today, God loves you. Today, all of us, we're sinners, but Jesus, he's the way to the Father. With every eye closed, with every head bowed. And so the entire church is praying. If you're here today, you say, Alex, I need a brand new beginning. Alex, I need forgiveness of my sins. Alex, I need a new start. I'm tired of living life the way I'm living. I'm tired of following after my own ways. I'm tired of chasing other things. I need a relationship with God and I want forgiveness of my sins. I'm going to count to three. With every eye closed, with every head bowed for privacy and concentration. Nobody looking around. This is a private moment. I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I want you to take a step of faith. And I want you to lift up your hand right where you're at. And that's just showing God, God, I need you in my life. I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Jesus, I need you to come and forgive me of my sins. I'm not going to single you out. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm not going to hand you a mic. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Just lift your hand for just a second and say, I, I need Jesus. Today, I need a new beginning. At the count of three, you raise your hand. Hands are already going up. One, two, three. Raise your hand all over this place. All over this place. Amen. 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 Raise it up. Raise it up. I see you. I see you. God bless 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 you. Hands raised up all over this place. Father, I thank you for each and every single hand raised. I thank you for every single person that's made a decision to follow you today. I pray that you seal this moment with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for new life. All of you who raise your hand, I'm going to say a simple prayer, and I want you to repeat this prayer with me. I'm going to say a very simple prayer, and what we're doing through this prayer is putting our faith and our trust in Jesus. In fact, all of us, as a church, as a family, as a community, let's all say it out loud. Let's, let's join them, and let's say this out loud. I believe that God is in this place. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, Father, thank you for today thank you for this opportunity 
I admit that I'm a sinner and that I need you. Today, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God, that you died for my sins, and on the third day, you resurrected. Come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I believe that today, I'm forgiven, I'm saved, and I'm healed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on and amen. Come on, church.